Hey everybody, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Been restarting this one a couple times. They say perfect is the enemy of good, so I'm just gonna try to do this one this time. Upper left hand corner, we have Swedish Phoenix, AKA 80s Mullet, AKA the People's Terran. And actually, if you check out 80s Mullet's Twitch TV stream, that is oftentimes where I am at when I'm watching StarCraft, because he tends to stream during my lunchtime. And he's a, he's a cool dude. Very kind of silly stream, which I enjoy. Kind of almost a little bit broish, but at the same time making fun of broish culture, which I appreciate. Thank you for everybody for the commentator, caster, viewer overview tips. The observer mode tips, that's what I'm looking for. So now I can follow units successfully. Upper right corner, we have Let's Go Champ as the White Zerg. And I'm part of the reason I keep having to restart this is I just have so much to say. First of all, shout out to Paul Hoke, because I did not give him a shout out as a patron in the last uh, in the last commentary. Second of all, if you guys want me to redo the audio on the last commentary, let me know. I have adjusted my mic settings, which I think is going to make my voice sound a little bit less robust. But at the same time, what I believe it is going to do is cut down on the extingent, extingent, is that a word? Background audio. So that, so it's going to be a little bit less high quality, but at the same time, it will, you won't catch my, the rustling of groceries in the background or the mini fridge or things like that. I might try to adjust it here and there based on what I can do based in the moment as to what's going on in my house. I'm literally casting outside of my kitchen, in, in my kitchen. That's where I have to do the, the casting from. Probably gonna see a 12 hatch build from Let's Go Champ. One day I hope to have an office to cut down on all of that, but at the moment it is not a reality. Let me talk about the meta at this stage because that is the thing that if you have not been privy to all of the other things that have been going on, in the StarCraft world up to this point, there was a build that was very much like the Bisu build, but for Terran called the 111, where Zerg were just absolutely getting decimated by it. Initial Overlord Scout to the bottom right hand corner, so we're gonna see a drone scout attempt from Let's Go Champ to the upper left hand corner. We do see a barracks being planted, refinery being taken, initial SCV scout, unfortunately going to the bottom left hand corner for 80s mullet, so he may end up scouting last. We'll see. Hatchery about halfway, but the meta, because of the 111, it basically the way it worked is you build a factory, you build a starport, you get an initial vulture, you get an, a wraith, you get a marine, and the vulture, wraith, marine, all that sort of harassment would really be too much, be very overwhelming for Zerg to deal with. So it really pushed Zerg away from early game macro play. Drone gonna be able to see the amount of SCVs on gas. He's letting 80s mullet know that he saw it. He's gonna go ahead and back off with that drone. In the meantime, now that this marine is popping out, 80, we'll see if 80s mullet is able to get a scout in. Spawning pool, so typical is spawning pool at 11, then gas at 10, and to deal with any sort of potential early 1-1-1 play, to go for a two-hatch muta is how Zerg has kind of dealt with it. And so essentially what the meta is now is you go up to an early layer, you go two-hatch muta off a usually 12-hatch. Second hatchery coming online right now, and then you can see yeah, there's two Zerglings being built to stick to a more economic build, and also, yeah, get that layer out. Factory being built on the opposite side from 80s mullet. He's probably doing his classic, the 80s mullet special, or the the mullet special. As he, it's on Liquipedia. Check it out. I'll talk about that in a second, though. But essentially, what Zerg have been doing is they've been going to hatch muta, then trying to once they have mulesks out in the field and get a bit of map control, they try to secure an additional third base someplace to get that third gas, and then sit on three gas and get to hive tech, get to defiler tech, and play the game from there. And Really, that's pushed Terran back towards the standard Medic Marine Ball and trying to do disruptions around that. 80s Mullet plays a bit of a different game, my friends. He plays early Vultures, early Goliaths. And so, not a lot of early Vultures, but one early Vulture to go out go and maybe try to deny this third base at any location should it be being produced. Another SCV scout kind of moving out. In the corner, it looks like Sun Colony being built so that there's fewer Zerglings. So basically, the Zerglings just going to try to block that ramp. Um, Mr. Zergling scout right there that died, I believe. I think that was just for scouting purposes. It is going to see the command center. Marine going to move out in the field now, as well as an SCV, that damaged SCV. He wants to see if this drone that's moving out now is going to go ahead and build that third hatchery preemptively. But once, I think once he sees this vulture, he's, and also sees this overlord, looks like, actually, wow. So Marine and Zergling are just going to pass right by one another. This Zergling actually might be able to sneak in because there's no protection here on this ramp and you'll be able to get some additional scouting information, which would be significant. Second factory being planted. Uh, so what 80's mullet tries to do is he goes for, uh, here comes the Zergling. SCVs did not stop to try to interrupt that. So it looks like he is going to be able to, oh, and he might get an SCV kill as well. Vulture is not able to stop that Zergling before he draws blood. Blood for blood. Disru it's, you know, a nice win here. 
not game ending, but it's a nice win. That drone getting chased down by that SCV, Hades Mullet letting him know, nope, you're not going to build anything out in the field. So, and it looks like the response from Let's Go Champ is to go ahead and build an in-base third hatchery. He is going to be mining off both gas. Spire is just about finished. So essentially what Hades Mullet does is he just builds a lot of Goliaths, gets Charm Booster, gets Weapons 1, and tries to rely on a, I think he goes for like 8 to 10 Goliaths. I should go study that and double check what that is exactly but he moves out when he has a significant goliath force tries to press either that third base that's been established or just move up to the front and devastate from there the trick of it is is if you lose those initial goliaths oftentimes you can you'll end up in a lot of trouble a lot of trouble six mulisks being built initially carapace also being upgraded so that and i think that is a significant um investment the vulture sneaking in trying to see what he can isn't going to be able to catch anything marine camped out at that additional expansion position try to deny that the one thing for goliath though is even though they do very well anti-air they are very immobile and there's a lot of territory to cover as well so you're kind of in this position as terran where with the 80s molt special in particular where you need to press out and force your opponent to engage you you have to be careful if you get caught out of position you don't want to end up losing your goliath and then the opposite side as a zerg player you need basically a solid economy you need the beef you need the mass looks like you managed to clear out the marine here did the marine move out okay so there's a vulture sneaking in i think let me see if i can find a kill on one of the yep found a kill ha managed to click it so milos were able to clear that marine here at the three o'clock position looks like uh let's go champ is going to go ahead and take that and i think he's got a good view of what's happening here as 80s already has turrets up he knows there's goliath there so he shouldn't just go diving in willy-nilly with his fragile mulisks just go ahead and try to maintain map control take out that vulture you can see he's trying to scooch out and do that but yeah as a zerg looks like he's getting weapons one he's going to move more towards so sometimes players will just stick with zerglings and pure mutalisks oftentimes players will go for this they'll try to get the hydralisks out in the field and do a hydralisk mutalisk combination to deal with the goliaths and if there's a transition into siege tanks you want the mutalisks diving on the siege tanks and the hydralisks engaging the goliaths where you can and it becomes kind of a positional battle from there this is the uh, okay well we're gonna know how many goliaths it is in just a moment because i think this is the moment where we're gonna see 80s molt start to move out yeah and i'm almost wondering if he'll adjust this build in the future and maybe even send out an scv with this to make it even more devastating mutalists hanging out in the background looking for an opportunity to strike gonna dive in and i think there's yeah even more mutalists now they're able to take out that one turret able to halt gas production as well and this is again where it can be difficult to deal with because those goliaths stumbling back up so the mule is able to go in, get some damage done, and then sneak back out. They are going to lose two. Two mules getting taken out. Random Goliath selected as well. But this is exactly what you want to do. You want to keep those Goliaths back until you have enough meat, just pure meat, to cope with it. Uh, and just devastate them when they move out in the field. Ooh, some mule is taking some free damage right there. 80s mullet pushing out. He needs to be careful, though. I think he's realizing, okay, a couple of those mules were taken out. So I can move this. And this is exactly, I'm sorry, 80s. This is exactly what you don't want to do. Split those Goliaths up. You want to keep them in a clump so that they can protect each other. But he's just moving them across the field, getting them in position. This is a significant amount of Hydralisks. So this is going to be a question. And I think between the Mulus and the Hydralisk, it is possible to clean up this attack force. So let's, uh, getting supply block with that Overlord kill. So the question is, is engagement. Good spread. Hydralis don't have the range upgrade, I don't believe. Moving up right there. Yeah, it looks like it's just finished. Plus weapons one. 80s mullet microing back to the high ground to rely on that misfire. But he's not holding position on the misfire location. Able to clear out most of the Hydralis. Might catch all, all the Hydralis. But I think he's still going to end up losing his Goliaths in the meantime. And it looks like, yeah, the Mu so five Mulus. I We'll see how this works out. I'm curious if you can end up with four or three. Looks like four are going to survive gonna micro his oh, okay he's gonna micro his way out and have four mulisks remaining nice play but he has established this third base at this stage effectively and 80s mullet knows it because this is this is the critical thing if you go early goliaths like this looks he's got five factories up getting siege tech getting additional machine shops so we can get additional siege tanks up this is the cost of this build now you essentially don't have map control You've got to go into more of a defensive play. You're giving Zerg complete map control. Actually, Let's Go Champ could do a lot of things at this meantime, in the meantime. If he wanted to just flood a bunch of Zerglings, uh, do something like that, build a bunch of Hydralisks, he could maybe press in against the much reduced Goliath count because that was all of the Goliaths. It doesn't look like he's going to do so. Maybe 
and opting instead to go for more macro plays at 31 drones currently, which is not a bad amount of drones for this number of bases, but he's going to go ahead and establish, and I like this, going ahead and establishing the three o'clock. I might mess up with the numbers. So this is technically two, this is three. Daylight savings was recently, guys. So look at it that way. Everybody's time traveling recently. So yeah, there you go. Uh, Queen's Nest being plopped down. And we'll see if, uh, so probably moving to Hive Tech. We'll go from there. Hydralisk scooching in, Ooh, loses a Hydralisk for free against the Goliaths. The one thing though is if 80's Mullet can get some Siege Tanks and can get some Goliaths, this is a nice, and you can get them in this position, this is a nice defensible position where you can just have the Siege Tanks kind of plopped on this line and you cover a lot of territory and can defend a lot of things. Hydralisk's moving out, looking maybe for a way to sneak in and stop this expansion from going up. I almost want to see an additional expansion out of Let's Go Champ, but I did, have I been saying Let's Go Pog Champ here and there? I might say that again because I just like that better. Sorry, Let's Go Champ. Let's Go Pog Champ. Uh, <laughs> now people are going to be like, he's my favorite now. Let's see him do it. Barracks, I love this. Barracks scouting up there. Also, let's see if he's going to plant some additional mines. This is critical for AD's mullet to do as well. Is if he can sneak some vultures out in any area where the mutalists and hydralisks aren't secure Ooh, yeah get those mines out and you can see yeah it's just a funnel these hydralisks getting slammed by the siege tanks getting absolutely slammed by the siege tanks but this is a nice opportunity to sneak out with some vultures plant some mines deny additional bases yeah doing it good job 80s uh some additional hatcheries have been plopped down i think we're gonna see some queen production actually because i don't see hive tech yet um hydralisks are just trying to sneak around stop these vultures from kind of splitting out Kind of like, and they're slippery little mofos. In the bottom right hand corner might be able to halt that additional expansion. But yeah, no no hive tech just yet. Queen's nest is there. Uh, queen is an option. Look, actually, no, actually, just sticking with pure, pure mutalist. Queen is an option to deal with this sort of mech play. I'm going to go ahead and back off, try to defend that third. The one thing from Let's Go Champ I am not seeing, which I like to see, is more overlords and also that speed overlord upgrade, particularly with the the mines and the marines and things like that just to keep an eye on the immobile mech force and punish it that way it looks like instead what is going to happen is uh, keep in mind carapace one on these mutalisks he's going to gather up all of his mutalisks and dive into the main and again this is the weakness Goliath can only be because it's more units and fewer of them or sorry fewer units uh, the fewer beefier units they can't be everywhere at once and also they're just difficult to micro and they're out of position this is not going to be enough turrets to defend this and also because it's such a gas heavy build otherwise you end up with delayed science vessel count so they're going to be able to go in take out all of the turrets disrupt mining in the main which is critical because mech is expensive so this is a big blow to mole only a single goliath right there which is also going to get cleaned up Science Vessel actually just starting in production for Mullet as well as Irradiate, realizing, oops, those are things I need, perhaps. And, yeah, the Goliaths getting taken out there. Or, sorry, a couple Goliaths that are... And you can just see this is all working against him. So, that usually where this is... Oops, go ahead and back out there, buddy. Uh, usually where this is nice defense against some sort of ground attack, things like that, against Mules Karaz, when you're dealing it with just Goliaths, it becomes a liability. Because they you got to go through the buildings to get into a place where you can defend things. And it looks like... Pogchamp realizing, okay, I've done some economic damage. Those Goliaths are out of position. Maybe I can sneak in and attack. These tanks aren't sieged. They're starting to siege up now. Getting pounded. And for, uh, the Mutalists now diving in. Actually going to be able to clean up this tank count if he can focus fire with those Mutalists on top of those tanks. Another huge blow. Losing a lot of Hydralists. But honestly, this is still a great trade for Let's Go Champ. But wow, that's a lot of turrets. So many turrets. Taking a lot of damage. But I still think that was a great trade overall for Let's Go Champ, and it looks like some Hydralis is just going to sneak up just in case some more Vultures are trying to peek through. I do love that 80s Mullen is like, okay, well, yeah, I lost some tanks there, things like that, but I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to sneak these Vultures through to try to deny additional bases out in the field. Another group, a full control group, I'm hearing some attacking someplace, I'm not sure where. Another full control group of Mutalisks, is it somewhere? No, okay. Another full control group of Mutalisks moving in. Again, going to be able to pound away and just straight up engaging these Goliaths at a good angle where it's just one by one. I don't know that this is as good an attack at this stage because there's just not a lot of minerals left to take out a lot of SCVs to wipe out. So maybe it'd be good to sit on the factories. Um, oh, some overlords moving in, unfortunately, and they're probably going to get taken out for free. No science vessel still or radiate to, to wipe this out. 
looking for it but not seeing it. And yeah, those overlords, I think they're just miscued. There's the science vessel, finally. And is it going to be able to move in? There's the irradiate. That's going to push Let's Go Champ out. Finally. But still a significant amount of damage done. A lot of SCVs taken out. Gas critically stopped. Another overlord getting taken out. And I got to say, Let's Go Champ in a good position here. He's got the 3 o'clock base established, the 2 o'clock base established, the main and the natural. He's got Hydler's Sten up. Um, does not have Hive Tech up critically, though. He's just sitting on Tier 2 Tech at this stage. Does have level 2 weapons. Isn't even going to bother going with Carapace, because why? I mean, <laughs> tanks splat, you know? Hydralisk's moving across, trying to reestablish map control and positioning. Does have level 1 weapons um, and level 1 armor for the Mulisk on the opposite side. Uh, we do have level... So level 2 weapons being upgraded for 80s, making that way for you know, standard mech play. Does have a level 1 um, armor. Another dive in from all these mules. There should be some more science vessels, though I think, it, yeah, there's two science vessels. This one doesn't have enough energy, though, so it's going to just move up to sacrifice itself and die. That is unfortunate. There's the science vessel. It's a little bit. It needs one more mana to be able to cast and irradiate to get something accomplished. And unfortunately, going to the spread clump instead of the nearby clump loses that science vessel as well. Finally, the Goliath able to get in position, but again, spread out, blockaded the tanks there as well, all in the same hotkey. And now, critically, that armory is it going to finish the weapons upgrade? There's two SCVs to try to repair it. This is going to be close. Is it going to finish? Photo finish! Level 2 weapons does upgrade. That's critical. That would have been a lot of, first of all, time loss, but also gas loss for Mullet. So, small victories there. Mutalists have overstayed their welcome. They should go ahead and back off. And again, continuing to be disruptive. PogChamp feeling it. PogChamp. <laughs> Let's go, Champ, feeling it. Bottom right-hand corner, going to go ahead and establish another base. And I like these mines that have been placed from 80s mullet in the interim to try to stop things a little bit. We do see... Sp okay, glad I caught this. Spawn broodlings being upgraded. Queens being upgraded to deal with that siege tank count. I love these hydralisks at the 8 o'clock position to try to stop any sort of... And actually, 80s mullet... Perfect timing. 80s mullet is moving out that command center. Now, here's the thing. With queens that are going to be out in the field shortly, you have to be careful when that command center gets in middling health because keep in mind you can just go ahead and dive in and, and take it over. More mutalisks moving up and again just abusing the lack of mobility. You can do this either with drops or with mutalisks. Abusing that lack of mobility but 80s mullet is on the move. This is a significant force. He's a little bit behind in the supply count. Is struggling to find gas but that is a lot of siege tanks, a lot of goliaths and it looks like he is going to have at least an irradiate to work with. That's yeah. Command center is going to have to back off because of those high, because of those hydralisks. Mutalisks moving across, along with the hydralisks to maybe do some damage. And oh, this is maybe getting caught out of position. This is a good clump position here. The mutalisk and the hydralisks going to have to come from a unidirection in the background. And there's mines in position and no overlord detection, so that might be able to clear out a couple units. Nice split though. That irradiate not getting as much accomplished as he wanted it to. And this is just going to be... Okay, there are queens, but I don't think any of them have enough energy. Yeah, none of them have enough energy. And he's going to lose a couple queens for free from these Goliaths on the low ground. This is not good. Not good at all for Let's Go Champ. So 80s Mullet finally finding some breathing room, able to swing back in. He's trying to go for a counterattack, but there were already Goliaths in position to deal with these Hydralisks. And it looks like in superior numbers, plus reinforcements coming in. And one for one... So that's a better trade just straight up, but still able to defend the base. This base is certainly going to get wiped out. Wow. And also the new base that was just established by Let's Go Champ probably going to get wiped out as well. So big wins for 80s Mullet. More Hydralisks trying to sweep across to try to deal with this. Finally enough energy to cast some spawn broodlings across the field to maybe do something. But it is too little too late, I'm concerned. It looks like some additional drones have fled into that upper right-hand corner. A couple of the sea chinks getting uh, taken care of. It looks like 80's once again going to try to move out, but those Hydra is still there. I got to imagine he's going to be able to clear that up sometime in the near future. It looks like there's enough beef. Bottom right Zerg beef. I'm not sure if there should be a word for that. Culinary Zerg eating. Command Center being pulled off again. So tit for tat here a little bit, but I still feel like taking out three hatcheries and denying additional bases, even though he ended up losing his mech army, was an overall win for 80's. He's actually ahead in the supply count overall. Looks like he... I missed it, but all these Goliaths dove in and were able to go ahead and clear out that base. 80's losing his mech army to the right, but he's going to be able to establish a base, but critically has wiped out mining at the 2 o'clock position, 
Is that right? Three o'clock position. Do my math backwards. Uh, <laughs> three o'clock position, two o'clock position, still mining. He's going to go ahead and plant another hatchery right there. Still has his mulesks out in the field. A lot of overlords just kind of sitting here at the natural. That would be a field day if Goliath ever got there. Not the place you want to be is Goliath, though. I, I don't think they'd ever wander right there. 80's mole is spread a little bit thin, though. He doesn't have a huge amount of siege tanks. Is mostly planning his defense right here. But I don't think that Let's Go Champ is going to be able to exploit that. Mostly because I don't think he sees it. He just doesn't have enough vision out on the map to be able to keep an eye on what 80's mole is doing. It looks like with another control group, eight, just eight Mulus this time, is going to be able to dive in. But unless he's taking out factories, I'm not sure what he's going to accomplish right there. Trying to push in with Hydralis, but they're just getting wiped out as they're getting attacked from the high ground from behind. And the Goliaths just, yeah, with that level two weapons, just carving out those Hydralisks. And not a lot else happening. Still a lot of queens out in the field. That could be the X factor in this match. Only level one Carapace. Uh, looks like I'm missing a bit, of, I'm just gonna let that go, missing a little bit of an attack. I don't think there was a lot accomplished here. So, Armory was already taken out, Supply Depot's damaged a little bit, Factories are still standing. This base isn't really doing any mining at this stage, still looks like upgrades continuing for 80's Molt in the upper left hand corner with those Armories. Some, oh, missed it again, sorry guys, I'll get better at this in time, but these drones getting wrecked and now Champ is in a desperate situation. He's moving out with his queens and these Hydralisks. He needs to stop mining, yeah. I think he's correctly assessed this. Losing these bases, bottom right, he needs to do something, wipe out some of these bases. He's got Goliaths. He really, I think he uh, really wants to take out the siege tanks with these queens rather than just flat Goliaths, but I don't think this is enough to get it done. This is with, Especially with the upgrade differential and the spider mines wiping out Hydralisks on the ground. Let's see if the Mulus can catch a little bit out of position. Some more units getting decimated from down below. Just an annihilation of Zerg left and right. There is Zerg blood on the ground everywhere you look. I think this might be the last hurrah. More units flooding in. But let's go champ. Is Yeah, he's, he's just hurt for bases. And if he doesn't wipe out this army with what he's got here. Okay, taking out some additional units. It looks like he's actually going to do it. I take it back. I was a little concerned. But if he does not take out all of this army right now and get more bases up and get the bases up and running he's in a lot of trouble and specifically stop 80s mullet also from mining 80s mullet wow that is a lot of turrets trying to micro against this tank is going to be able to take that tank out diving in he oh he doesn't need to dive in at this stage i think i think if he backed off and built a couple oh never mind it's too late though uh pushing in more goliaths coming in from underneath and 80s mullet actually has a sizable bank at this stage as well and i think that might be it for this mulesk force 80s mullet taking a huge swing way up in supply. Yeah, there's a lot of queens here, but I'm um, not a lot of them have energy for additional spawn broodling. Still a little bit here and there. And looks like, uh, yeah. GG right there. A little bit of a preemptive GG, I'm going to say. I think Champ probably could have still fought that out. But 80s mullet was definitely, I think, in a strong position there. He had the supply count advantage. He had the upgrade advantage. He had established additional bases. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do actually for my next quick commentary is just paste, uh, go over the community resource list and talk about streams that I enjoy watching. But again, check out 80s Mullet, uh, especially check out the uh, 80s Mullet bikini merch, which I find hilarious. And if you follow and subscribe, he's got some of the most hilarious follow and whatever not. Special thanks to him for getting me this replay. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Feedback on the audio quality is appreciated as always. And anything else? Um, trying to think if there's anything else to drop. We'll see if I can get another one of these out to you guys Thursday. I think I might try to cool it Thursday. Unless you guys want a re-commentary of the last match. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I wish you all the best.